Hi, I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap, and it's great to be back on the show. As paper crafters, we've been using punches on our pages and layouts for years. Well, today I've got some new innovative techniques that I can't wait to show you. So let's give our pages an old one-two punch and get started. All right, let's start by taking a look at our finished page so you can see where we're headed with our punched details. Right here on the corner, I've got this gorgeous fleur-de-lis punch, and it's punched into Club Scrap's Simply Beautiful paper collection. I just love the look of this paper with that detail punch. And then over here, I've got this incredibly gorgeous pocket page made with a border using that same corner punch. So let me show you how these two elements on the page were made. I'm gonna start it with just a piece of paper, and you can do this on the corner of anything. Here's Tonic Studios Fleur de Lis Corner Punch. It's actually a boot punch. It looks just like a little boot. And with the wings on it, it helps act as a good corner guide so everything's lined up even when you put your paper inside. I always like to give my punch a little squeeze first, and then I can grab it with both hands and give it a snap. And you'll notice that there isn't much that has fallen out because it's all been collected in this little container underneath the punch, which I really like about this. Okay, now let me show you how I made that perfect border out of the same punch. Now, that's always been a challenge. How do you get a perfectly straight line of punches in a row? It can be frustrating trying to do that. And Tonic has this border system right here that helps me achieve that. The corner punch is adaptable, so I can take out the wings. These are the corner guides. Those are no longer needed. And I'll place the punch right into the opening on the border system. Then I'm going to take my paper and put it where the punch entry point is. And with this horizontal measuring rule, I know that my paper is straight. Now, I can just center my first punch. So I, my paper is six inches wide, and I'll center at both threes right here. I can stabilize my punch with my thumb or finger, and then give it a push. Okay, now my next punch, I want it to be an inch away from the first one that I made because I've measured from here to here on the punch, and that's about an inch. So with my measuring bar right here, I'm gonna slide my paper from three down over to four, and I'll give it another punch. And then over to five, and then finally at six. Now let's take it over to do the other side, and you can see this punch is happening right in a perfect little row. And then five on this side. And then finally my last one at six. Okay, now if I take this out, I can see that my punches are all in a perfect little row. And if I just take a little scissors here, I can make the cuts where they naturally lie that are just holding this paper on by a thread. And now I have a gorgeous border for my page. I did this in purple, but you can also see it in the translucent here. It is absolutely gorgeous, and it makes a perfect spot to pull out this picture of little Lydia in this little book inside. Okay, I want to show you one more element that's on this layout here, and it's this darling little ribbon strip that I made out of paper using the same punch once again. So I started out with an inch and a quarter by 12 inch piece of paper, and I'll use that same punch and take it out of the border system and just hold it, line it up from edge to edge, and also there's a center guideline right here on the punch. It makes it really easy to confirm that my paper is in the center of my punch. I'll give it a squeeze. Perfect. Then I'll go around to the other side and I'll squeeze again. Okay, now all I need to do is take a piece of paper. This happens to be 7 eighths of an inch wide, or just trim it until it finally fits. <laughs> And our border strip is perfect. Okay, I have some more great techniques to show you. Let me grab another page. All right, now look at this beautiful die cut, die cut on this page and this wonderful stenciled border. Believe it or not, all of these elements were also created with punches. So let me show you how I did those. I'm gonna take the same punch. Remember, all of those little elements from their punches are inside the trap door here. So let's just get rid of those. <laughs> So here is our flower. It's just a plain old die cut, but we're really going to jazz it up with the same punch. By keeping this trap door open, you can align the petal of the flower perfectly in within that fleur-de-lis image. And what you'll do is just once you get it centered, give it a little squeeze to hold the punch in place. And then you can make your final punch with both hands because you'll need the energy behind it. And look at that. It's absolutely perfect. You know, I'm amazed at the detail that I'm able to achieve even through our heavier cardstock. 
Okay, that's the flower. The next thing I promised to show you is how I created that stenciled border. Now I thought it would be fun to make these punches into stencils because of the detail that they have, but I wanted to be able to see exactly where I was placing my stencil. So what I did was I started with a piece of clear transparency. I took my punch, put it in my border system, and did the same exact thing I did when I showed you the border. Started in the center and worked my way out on either side until I had every single punch in this transparency to make my border strip. Then I put the transparency on my paper. And once again, because I can see through it, I know exactly where I'm placing the row of images. Then if I just take an ink pad and a sponge tip, I can add that gorgeous flower to my page. And because of this is a transparency, the sponge just slides right around on it. And it's just amazing how this shows up on the paper. So when I pull this away, I really have a beautiful border. Now taking a look at that on the page once again, you can see what I've added here to really make this shine is a dab of glitter glue. And doesn't that really add a lot? Absolutely love this beautiful page. Now one other thing I'd like to show you about the border system here is that if you're not really fond of measuring like I seem to be, you have another way to space your punches perfectly even. This is a little guide here that you can place anywhere you wish near your punch, depending on the spacing that you would like. So when you place your paper in the border system and give it a punch, when I slide it forward, I can line up the center of this little guide with the center of the punched image and then give it another punch. And there you have it, a perfectly spaced border with absolutely no measuring required. So don't forget it, that's a really good possibility if you're not into measuring. Okay, and I promised a one-two punch, and that's the last thing I'm gonna be showing you is a border that I create with this little square of paper using not one, but two punches. And this is gonna be really fun when you start experimenting with this. So I'll start out with this image. Now I have a four-inch piece of paper. I'll center it on my punch like I always do, and then, then I'll move it on down and punch an inch apart from the first one. If you want it to go all the way to the edge, you need to actually go to the zero mark and punch again to go straight to the edge. And then I'm gonna bring it down over, back to the three over here. You'll keep track of where you've punched. I just always like to have the first punch right in the center. Okay, now I have a very attractive border. But we're gonna add a little bit more to it. This is the two part of the one-two punch. On the back of the tray, there is an adapter. It snaps right out, and I can place it right into the punch spot, right on the border system. And then, if I take a smaller punch, it's just a mini boot, <laughs> and then I can punch again, but this time only on the half inch marks. Okay, now I have this really kind of strange looking border here. Let me turn it around, and I'm gonna give this a little bend. What the bend will do is help me see exactly where I need to make a little snip. So I'm taking a scissors and just cutting on those bent lines, that way I know exactly where my border is gonna look the best. And I've got a beautiful one-two punch border. Let me show you how fabulous this looks on the card. And it says it all, simply beautiful. Now let me show you another layout that I did in a completely different color scheme using the same techniques that I showed you. You can see my punched border at the top here. I've installed a brad in the center of each of those. And then down over here, the stenciled paisley border and another border across the bottom. It turned out just beautifully. Well, if you're willing to give your pages the one-two punch, I'm sure they're gonna be a knockout. We'll see you next time. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.